Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. So in the last episode, you guys saw me install our rear frame rails. We've got everything tied in to our front spring mounts. We've got the back kind of free floating here as we fit our tail panel here. And of course, we're going to get that trunk pan welded in before we start welding things together back here. And uh, But no, we're starting to add a lot more strength back into the car, which of course is very exciting. Feels like now for the last year, year and a half, all I've been doing is cutting metal, more and more and more metal out of the car. But I think today is a turning point where we should be cutting the last big chunks of metal out of the car and replacing it with new stuff. Of course, our friends at AMD sent us some great sheet metal that I'm gonna showcase for you guys in this video. But today we're gonna focus in on cutting out our rear footwell pan and also our rear seat pan. Now there isn't a ton really holding this in together. Um, probably there's a whole lot more holding your guys' cars together, I hope. But you guys know we already popped out here all of our original spot welds when we fit our, in our new frame rails. So there's nothing holding it together there. And then we've also just got little tiny tabs right here, a little bit back here. Same on the back side uh, on the other opposite side of the vehicle. And then also here with this little V-brace, there's a couple original welds on the front and then a couple on the back. But our friend, the four inch angle grinder is gonna make very nice and quick work out of what's left there and holding that together. So let's take a look here at our brand new rear seat fan. Now, as I mentioned, our friends over at AMD sent this to us here, and I, I'll be honest, I mean, this is probably the best, <laughs> closest to original factory stamping that you're gonna get, along with all of the B-body sheet metal here that I've been experienced with, but another very, very nice piece here that's gonna add a lot of strength back into our car. So, you know, ours is a little bit different than what it was from the factory, just because we added in those mini tubs here on both sides. And what we did with that is that we added two and a half inches to each side, so we're gonna end up having to narrow this entire back side to side by approximately five inches here across the back. Now, of course, with all the sheet metal work that we're doing on this car, I don't want it to look like it was cut up, hacked up, welded all back together, even though, you know, this car is basically a roof of the title. Um, I want it to appear factory. And so I'm gonna show you guys kind of where we're gonna measure, how we're gonna take this off and weld it back on to make it look as original as possible. So let me hop into the car here and I'll show you guys what's left holding our rear seat pan in. All right guys, so looking at this, like I said, there's really only a couple little spots holding this together here and it's gonna come right out. Now, something that I just noticed and you can really, really see it from this vantage point, you know, when you put these pieces of metal in here, you'd think that they're going to line up exactly center, perfectly symmetrical with the center of the car here. Now, if you're looking where I'm looking right here, there's this little recess here. It's this nice little square indent. I would have probably been frantically trying to get that V-brace to mount perfectly even onto that. So, you know, something that's really interesting with these cars, at least with B-bodies, and I'm sure there's a lot of others like that, the entire drive line appears to be shifted over um, towards the passenger side, probably by about two inches, inch and a half, two inches here. So something to keep in mind, of course, guys, when you're ever you're gonna be cutting metal out, it's always good. Take a ton of before and after pictures here, and I've taken a million of this car so far <laughs> to document our journey and our progress on this. But, you know, when it comes to making sure that things line up exactly like they should, you know, another example here, this rear footwell pan actually comes up from the bottom here and mounts to the underside of our um, rear seat pan. So just things that you want to take into account before you start cutting on this. You really need to know how the whole thing all goes back together. Pretty important. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab my extension cord, my grinding wheel, and we're going to make quick work out of getting this rear seat pan out of the car and then getting our new pan test fit into the car. So let's get to it.
I'm probably going to get a different car. Why? A Mustang. Ew, no. Yes. What? <laughs> Why would you want a Mustang? Because. Who drives Mustangs? <laughs> So what kind of car are you going to drive? A Mustang. <laughs> what? Why would you ever drive a Mustang? What the hell is wrong with you? You are not my child. You know that? You are not my child. Do you hear me? You know that still is re recording? Yes, I do. If everyone sees this, they will probably call the cops on you. Because he said you're not my child. No, they're going to call the cops on you because you want to drive a Mustang. No. Yeah. Is Mustang illegal? They should be illegal because they're terrible. No. They Everybody has Mustangs. No. Who drives a Mustang? Someone See? on YouTube did. See, nobody. Nobody drives Mustangs. Yeah, well. So not that Someone guy. on YouTube did. Nope. Uh huh. I saw it. Yeah. What was her name? Um. It was their first video. Yeah? Was it their last video? No, their first video. Probably was if they're driving Mustangs. <laughs>
All right, guys, so after a very long night of panel prep and also cleaning because my garage is an absolute disaster, we've got our rear seat pan here ready to go into the car. Now, I'll give you guys a quick recap of everything that we did because I really didn't spend a whole lot of time talking during this video, so real quick of everything that we got done here. Uh, first thing, measure three inches off of the inside of here because, as you guys know, we added two and a half inch mini tubs on each side of the car. So, you know, figure a total of five inches is going to have to be removed out of this back seat pan. So, just to give myself a little bit of extra space and leeway and to make sure this pan would actually fit into the car, I measured three inches off of this edge. Once I got down here to where this radius was, I wanted to preserve this to make it look original. So, I just switched it up to about two inches here and brought this in. Um, once I did that, I was able to get it into the car, you know, kind of place this uh, chunk here into the car and get good measurements, make a good trace around this whole thing so that we can butt weld it all nice and tight. And, you know, once, especially once this gets in epoxy and later into paint, you know, you'll never really be able to tell that this was actually even sectioned. Um, once we did that, we also ended up uh, losing about two and a half inches out of this corner here. So just made a real simple 90 degree flange, welded that up, and I have this whole thing prepped here, as you can see, to be plug welded back into the car. Um, what's really nice too about having this up onto the lift, I was able to get underneath with a paint marker and just trace out where everything was. So, you know, our front spring mounts here, I was able to go around the whole thing, mark it, so that way, you know, we'll have perfect placement, hopefully, once this goes back into place into the car. Um, same here with the other side, just got this all ready. Got the bottom side of it um, and weld through primer just because it was bare and exposed metal. And uh, yeah, it's ready to go into the car. Um, take a quick peek here. Everything in here is all cured up and ready to go. So, you know, we cleaned up all of our edges where we're gonna be welding to. And then I also went ahead and I pour 15 the inside of the frame rails, just so that way, you know, this car is not gonna rust down the road. And, uh, you know, we're gonna pour 15 basically the entire bottom side of this car once, uh, once we get everything fit up and welded into place. But after that, got it all into weld through primer. Also cleaned up here these braces um, on top and on bottom. There's kind of the two up here on the top, the one on the bottom. Um, so it's all ready to weld in. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna shove this rear seat pan through the windshield, get it into the car, get it fit up. We're gonna use sheet metal screws to pull it all nice and tight here, um, here along the edges. And then also here on the radius of our rear frame rails, we wanna make sure it's as tight as possible to those frame rails and back into place so that way, number one, it goes exactly where it should be, and number two, so that way we get really nice penetration and a nice firm fit for our weld. So let's get this in the car and let's get it welded in.
All right guys, so our rear seat pan is fully welded into place and overall it turned out pretty nice here. I'm, I'm happy with, uh, with how everything fit. Um, you know, all of our pre-drilling that we did lined up really nice here on our rear frame rails and also on our spring support. Um, you know, here again, that rear brace, no, it's not, uh, you know, it, it, it is off center, but it's actually the brace is centered with the car. The tunnel here is not centered with the car. With these cars, it's actually kicked over here about two inches. It was like that on the old piece, as I showed you guys. So it went right back into place where it was. You know, this V-brace actually only had a couple welds holding the whole thing together. I think each of the top arms here only had a tack on each side. And then I wanna say there's three across the bottom. So going with the theme, <laughs> of the rest of the structural pieces on this car. I ended up just welding it solid. You don't have to do that, but again, where it makes sense, I like to do that. Now, while we're here, definitely time to go ahead and do the rear seat, um, you know, the footwell pans here. So what I've done here is kind of done a little bit of pre-work. Um, I went ahead, I laid this over the top. You know, this, this footwell pan actually goes underneath of our floor pan here, but what I did notice is that I went ahead and welded all this into place and then I realized that this little hump here is where that foot weld pan pushes into and I ended up having to break free a couple welds here across that side. Um, to kind of see where I have to drill, what I did is I laid this on top, just shot a quick thing of uh, primer over it to pull that line and you know as you can see it's going to go at least that far up into there. So I noticed it here I didn't fill in those welds, but I did have to pop some welds free on that side, and I went ahead and popped those ones on that side. So not a big deal, we can clean it up. You won't even be able to tell that it was actually, or ever even done. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna get these into place. Um, it slides up underneath of the back here on our rear seat pan. It sits firmly over the top of our floor pan, and you're probably looking at that green jack wondering why that's there. So what's really nice is that you can take the jack and a piece of wood and you jack it up and basically once we get the top here screwed into place we're going to jack up our floor pan until it meets that rear seat uh the the footwell pan here on the front and then screw it all into place make some marks drill some holes and fill them with weld so let's uh let's get to it and let's finish this up
Alrighty you guys, so after a very, very long two and a half days of being out here, our rear footwell panel and also our rear seat pan are completely installed in the car. Now, you know, it does look really nice. I'm very happy with it overall. Um, it sure added a ton of strength back into the car, getting this fully welded back together because it really connects the front half to the back half of the car, it connects each of the rockers together, also with our supporting piece here. So this rear seat pan is really a key piece of the structure of this car. So happy to have this part done and gets us one step closer to wrapping up this car and getting it closer to bodywork. Now, what comes next? We still have some pieces here to tie out on the, the rear end of this car. Um, first and foremost, I'm probably going to address this rear deck filler and window channel issue. We're going to have to remake a lot of this rear window channel um, from scratch and fabricate that because these are pushed out to like February, March, they're AMD. So we're going to replace that. I've got a brand new deck filler in the box so we can get in this car. We'll get this completely wrapped up here. Then move on to our trunk pan, which we do have sitting over there. I've had that for probably a year, year and a half, um, sitting on the shelf waiting to go in, and it's time to go in. Um, we can get this brace out of here and uh, blow the quarters back off and we'll have full access to get that trunk pan in here in one piece. So after that comes tying all the body panels together, welding it all solid and permanent, and uh, getting it onto bodywork. So really exciting time. Things are happening really quick, and especially with the floor pans, they're big pieces of sheet metal. So, you know, knocking out and getting progress like that in two days is what this part, or at least what this stage is all about. So another thing, guys, um, we are about at the time, like I said, of, of getting this thing close to body work. I hope to have the metal wrapped up here within the next month at max, and we'll be moving it on to body work. I'm gonna show you guys every step, every stage along the way for that. But I need your guys' help in picking out a paint color. If you guys follow me on Instagram or YouTube already if you're already subscribed I've kind of narrowed it down to four colors and I want to get your guys's votes and uh, whatever you guys decide what has the most votes is gonna be the color that we paint the car um, first color pearl white absolutely beautiful color I think it'll look awesome on this car um, you don't see a ton of chargers in white so I think that that could be a really really neat choice of course I think with any color that we do you know looking at tail stripes is a definite must I love that look on the car um, the second color octane red Again, another beautiful color. This is on uh, you know, some of the newer Hellcats. You see this color, um, almost like a blood red color. It looks awesome. Um, we've then got Hell Raisin, which is kind of a draw on the old Plum Crazy Purple, but kind of next level Plum Crazy. It's even crazier than, uh, <laughs> than the previous one. I've seen a few of these cars or color cars in person, and they just look fantastic. And then lastly, we've got F8 Green which is you know, certainly a draw on the 60s color. It's a nice classic color on this car. Um, you know, I think that that could be a, a really, really neat color as well. So with that, guys, I'm gonna end it here. Again, thank you all so much for the help and support along the way. And uh, can't wait to keep showing you guys the progress on this build. So take care, we'll see you next time.